Hi, I did not want to make this video. I've been trying for over 24 hours and I keep changing my mind. But a fellow YouTuber, Michelle of Reseller Project, spoke her truth. And so now I'm going to speak mine. So let's launch this Reseller Robo. everyone, welcome back to Reseller Robo. My name is Beth. I'm glad you're here. I uh, hope this video is not going to be a downer. I don't mean for it to be. I try to be positive on this channel, but I have some things I need to talk about. But before I do, I'm on my way to Austin right now. Before I do, I want to clear up a few things from my last live stream. And if you haven't seen that live stream, I was talking about downsizing my store by 1100 items. These are items that are sizes that I no longer pick up, items that have been sitting in my store for up to three years. And I think we decided, or I decided at the end, that I was going to auction some of those items off. And I, I did. I think I started 42 auctions. And um, But what I didn't tell you guys is I marked all 1100 items down to 1999. $7.99 best offer, but what I forgot to tell you, I think, is that these items are on sale every day for 40% off. So it's more like $11.99 on sale with a best offer, $7.99 auto accept. And truthfully, I would accept less than that. And so when we were talking about auctioning these items, we talked about starting them at $4.99 with a $7.99 buy price. Sorry, I'm trying to get out onto a busy street. Well, most of those auctions are getting ready to end. And so I got to thinking about it. And Carol, thank you so much for the idea of auctioning. I really appreciate it. It was something I had not thought about before. But then I got to thinking years ago, I used to auction clothes and I never sold one item. Other auctions worked for me, but not for clothes. So I got to thinking, what about if I have the buy it, the buy price start out at $5 instead of an auction price? And in order to do that, at $19.99, these items would have to be 75% uh, off. So what I did was I went through those 1,100 items. I picked um, over 1,000 of them that were the smaller sizes. And I made a new category called 75% off. And so those items are now going to be starting at $5.99. Take it or leave it. I took the best offers off and I took the coupons off. So, yeah, I took the coupons off of those items. It's just $4.99. And hopefully this will get rid of them. The sale starts today at 3 o'clock. Right now it is noon. Straight up noon. Now the part I didn't want to talk about. And the reason I did not want to make this video is because I did not want people to pity me. I did not want people to feel sorry for me. Um, but I watched Michelle's video where she spoke her truth about what's going on in her life. And I didn't pity her. I didn't feel sorry for her. I felt compassion for Michelle. But I did not pity her. And another reason I want to do this video is I suspect there are people out there right now reselling who are experiencing this. Most people don't tell you when this kind of stuff is going on. And I've tried to be so transparent on this channel without, you know, saying names, bringing my family into it, you know, keep all that personal stuff personal. I'm going to try not to cry. I can't believe I'm about to cry. Uh, this has been a really, really rough week for me. I am feeling pulled in so many directions right now that I, 
I mean, I mental health wise, I'm in a really bad place. And when you're stressed, it's bad enough. And I'm not saying that my stress is worse than your stress. Absolutely not. But having OCD, I know that my OCD becomes unmanageable when I am super stressed. And so that's the first thing that I have to check um, when my OCD starts up is how much stress do I have, you know? I'm feeling, I think, probably the way my parents felt years ago. I was at work, and I got a phone call, and my both of my grandmothers were alive at that time. They were both in their 90s. My dad was in the emergency room with his mother, and my mother was in a different hospital in an emergency room with her mother, and I got this phone call, we need help, and that's kind of how I'm feeling right now. I need help. And and I'm taking care of that. I'm taking care of that. But I have so many people relying on me right now, counting on me. And I did a video last year, I think it was, on priorities. And I said that, you know, really number one priority needs to be myself, even though it kind of sounds selfish to say that. You can't take care of other people if you're not taking care of yourself. And I haven't been doing that lately. And I haven't been saying no. And I haven't been delegating responsibilities to other people. I've ta- I'm now taking care of that. I have a full-time job, for those of you who haven't watched me before. I have a full-time job. I have a reselling business. And I do caregiving. And I- I- I'm just beyond stressed. I'm going to put a picture if I remember, of my office right now. In order to go on this trip today, I'm only be gone about uh, maybe 36 hours. In order to leave on this trip, I had to take all my inventory out of my out of my car. And I don't have any place for it. My my trunk is my station one. So what you see on the screen, if I can remember to put it, is all the inventory I just took out of my trunk. I still have not listed all the things from last week. And now I've got this week's haul. When I get back, all that's going to be there. I have several appliances that I have not parted out, and I've had them for over two months. I don't want to do it. And then this purging the inventory thing came up, and I lay at wake at night trying to figure out where I'm going to put 1,100 items while I'm waiting for a garage sale to start. Phil, if you're watching, donating this shit is looking better every day. Um, I think I figured out how, how to do it, but I'm not sure if it will logistically work. But I want to know in the comments below, have you ever felt like your life is totally unmanageable? It's affecting everything in my life. And I was trying to figure out why is this happening? Why am I so stressed out? I mean, all these things are hitting me in the face, right? Slap, slap. But... I got to thinking about it, you know, I have a planner, and I've shown you my planner, and usually my planner is full. The bottom has my menu, the top has my eBay things that I need to do, the middle has vet appointments, doctor appointments, things I need to do for my boss. When you open my planner now, other than my menu, it's completely blank. I don't write anything down anymore. Why? I almost forgot a birthday of one of my grandchildren a couple of months ago because I didn't write it down. Let me tell you, when you have five grandchildren and you're 62 years old, it gets hard to remember dates and how old they are. So not only do I need to write these on my monthly calendar, I need to move them to the daily calendars. And so that's going to be my goal is I'm going to write everything down. I want my planner to be full of every single thing I need to do. And maybe that will help me. I'm at the point right now where every little thing that happens sets me off. I react. I don't stop and think. And we're going to talk about some Poshmark buyer drama in a few minutes. And what I did and how it set me off. 
and how I ended up having to call a friend because it had me so upset. And then the same day I got one on eBay, but the one on Poshmark was worse. That should not happen. With our business, we should take the personal out of it. But when we are stressed, we react. We don't pause and think, how can I handle this in a business way? You know, a professional business way. And then I'm going to talk about how I went over to some other resellers, eBay stores that I have saved. And I look at the way they respond to buyers that are totally out of control. Not, not the sellers, the buyers, their feedback. And, you know, I can't see their messages, but I can see when somebody leaves them a bad feedback. I went over and looked. I was a little shocked. So I think I've said everything I want to say about my mood, my, um, I, I said today I was going to ship anything that was sold today. I was going to ship it before I left and I made a lot of sales before I left. So I was just shipping super fast. And sometimes that's not a good thing. I always thought, you know, I should ship as I sell, but I did that one time. Um, when I was going out of town, somebody bought something about 30 minutes before I left and I packed it and I put it in the pile on the porch for the mail carrier. And then I got a message saying, why did you ship this so soon? I want to cancel. I was gone. I can't believe you shipped it so soon. You didn't give me time to cancel. <laughs> so hopefully that won't happen. But anyway, if I think of anything else, I did have an antidote to share with you, but I can't for the life of me remember what it was. So if I remember it, I'll put it in here. And if I remember anything else about this situation, the stress and everything, um, I'll put it in here. So let me go ahead and, and give you a taste of this buyer. And I know this buyer's watching. Hello, I'm going to talk about you. This is my channel. I can talk about you. And I hope I get this in the right order, but just bear with me. Oh, this has to do with silent auctions. I will say that my silent auctions were not working correctly, I don't think. When I was doing 40% off, and I don't think my items were showing up as 40% off. And I think, I mean, it maybe sometimes it was, but one day I caught one. It was dresses, and it was showing full price. And I'm like, what the heck? No, but no wonder nobody wants to buy my stuff, you know? So now I've gone back to the $10 start and I'm just not putting things in there that are, you know, $30 range. You know, uh, if they're 28 or below, I'm putting $10 start and I've already started making sales. So Torrid is going crazy right now. I've sold four or five pieces of Torrid in the last two days. It, it's incredible. Uh, three, I think on Poshmark and one or two on eBay. Just in the last couple of days. My sales are still down, guys. I think I'm down 15% from the last 31 days, which is actually lower because last month I was down. So it's kind of bad. All right, let's go ahead and get started on this, this buyer. Um, so she was in a silent auction of mine, okay? I use Sidekick for my silent auctions because sometimes I run them when I'm sleeping, sometimes I run them when I'm at work, and you know, I could pop in there and, and I have this little thing, I put welcome items added to my closet daily. I pop in there once in a while if I think about it, but I'm running three to four auctions a day and I don't always think about it. So about bottom line is she was in there and evidently she asked me a question. Now I have Sidekick send me a text when somebody asks a question, either I didn't get it or I missed it, I don't know. But anyway, she bought a pair of shorts. Um, I think she might have bought those outright by making me an offer. I don't know. So she, she first message I get from her is, um, you know, I, I was in your silent auction. You weren't there. Um, I need to learn how to, I need to know how to do that. Um, I have some things I need to clear out of my closet. Uh, so obviously she's a seller. Keep that in mind. And um, how do you do that? You know, how do you do an auction without being there? Now, almost all platforms that I know of, they have a rule where you're not supposed to send people off-site, right? And Sidekick, even though Sidekick makes money for Poshmark, they are a competitor because they also share 
items and I didn't feel comfortable saying, oh, well, I use Posh Sidekick, you know, no, I don't feel comfortable with that. So I told her, I said, you know, I don't feel comfortable telling you that I use an app. I said, you know, uh, I want to keep my account with Poshmark in good standing. Perhaps you could, you know, do an internet search on your question and, and find some options. She, I don't think she liked that answer. And, um, so then the next one I think was, um, you know, why don't you answer my question or something like that? And, uh, then, then I got, and then I got to think, and I thought, well, my YouTube channel is linked at the top. Poshmark lets us link our YouTube channels at the top. So I said, Hey, you know, uh, my website is up above my name. Click on it. I talk about that there. I was even nervous about doing that, but I did it. Okay, then she starts talking about, you know, why aren't you answering my question? I said, I did answer your question. I don't feel comfortable, you know, doing this. And um, by then I was tuned out, you know, I was tuned out. And so I had already shipped these shorts. The next day I start seeing messages about, you know, I want to put these two items in with the shorts, um, you know, let me know. Okay, well, you can't add items to a package. On Poshmark unless you're paying for them all together she's a seller she should know that you know um, she's saying then you know and I ignored that because you can't do that um, and it's already shipped you know so I ignored it and like we're always told to do uh, you can just ignore it you don't have to answer questions if you and I've already answered but I'm not gonna answer then I started skimming things because I was just like Ugh, you know I, I skimmed it so I saw something about having cancer, treatment, she said something about granddaughter or grandparent or, you know, fixed budget, and then, um, you know, I don't want to do business with somebody who doesn't answer my questions, and if I can't have these two items added, then I don't want the shorts, and so me being stressed out and everything, you know, I said, uh, and I didn't, I didn't have to tell her this, but I did. I said, I have two jobs. I'm a caregiver. And I, and, oh, she says, why don't you make me an offer? She was waiting for me to make an offer on those two items. That's what it was. And I said, you know, I'm sure. She goes, I don't understand why you won't make me an offer. I, I don't want these if you're not going to make me an offer. And I don't want the shorts either. And I said, you know, I'm sure that you have the time and you have a mouse that you can click and make me an offer. Um. And I said, I don't have time for this nonsense. And I said, I'm going to block you and I'm going to report you to Poshmark for harassment. Because these, these messages kept going on and on. And they were long. They got longer. And um, so I blocked her. And then I thought to thinking, well, when she gets those shorts, she's either going to leave me a one star, which that doesn't bother me on Poshmark. It really doesn't make that big of a difference. Or she's going to try to return them. And so I went to those shorts and I messaged Poshmark problem with this order. And I said, look, I had to block this lady, um, you know, and she wanted me to go off site, you know, tell her something off site. And I didn't feel comfortable just letting you know that if she opens a return that she's pissed. And, um, so I, to this buyer, I don't owe you anything. Okay, I don't owe you any information from seller to seller. My website, my YouTube channel is for sellers. That's where I give the information on things that I know how to do. Pass that information on on how to sell on eBay, Poshmark, Mercari, whatever. I don't have to answer your questions on a selling platform. I get questions a lot about my color wheel on Poshmark. People say, I love the color wheel. Where did you get it? I don't tell them that. If I have a chance, I say, hey, Google small color wheel, make sure you get the small one, and you'll find it for sale. I don't send them to where I get my color wheel, because this place also sells clothing. It's a competitor of Poshmark. I don't owe you anything. I don't have to tell you how to do a silent auction. You can ask Poshmark that. You have Google at your fingertips. So you don't have to get upset with me when I don't answer that question. You know? 
And as a seller, if you're a seller and you have stale inventory that you're talking about, you should know that you cannot add items to a bundle when the bundle has already been paid for and when the bundle has already been shipped. So, what's that about? Anyway, I reacted. And then I had on eBay that same day, that second day that I was talking to this lady, she got a she got a swimsuit. She said it was faded. Now, when you look at the color wheel photo, the colors are super bright. So I don't know what she's talking about faded. And she said there was some slight peeling in the crotch, which is possible that I missed. I have sensitivity issues with my fingertips. Sometimes I miss slight peeling. I don't miss heavy peeling, but sometimes I miss slight peeling. And I said, I'm so sorry to hear that. I have 60 day free returns. Please open up a return case and I'll refund your money. Then she wrote back, I am very disappointed and surprised. I'm surprised and very disappointed. And I wrote back and I said, I am also, I stand behind my products. So please feel free to open a return case for a free week, you know, at no cost to you and you'll get a full refund. She still hasn't opened the case. And of course me, I'm going and I'm looking at my feedback every day, looking for a negative. And so far she hasn't, but eBay sends reminders. So when she gets that reminder, you need to leave feedback or you want to leave feedback, she'll remember it. But which makes me, brings me to this point. So I, one night I was laying in bed and I went to save sellers list and I have a lot of you saved, a lot of my friends, a lot of, um, YouTubers, some people, I don't even know who the heck they are. I mean, but I keep them in there anyway. Sometimes I go in there and see what people are selling, um, see what people are listing. You know, it's kind of fun to see what your friends have. And, um, and I decided to look at feedback. Now there's a lot of you that have a hundred percent feedback. Way to go. Wish that was me again. I used to 99.7 right now I'm at. And what I did was, am I still recording? I think I am. Okay, so what I know, I went to negative feedbacks, and some of these people, some of these sellers are extremely polite and professional, and then you can tell when they hit, had a bad day, just like me. You can tell when they're stressed because they snip back at these people, and I wanted to learn how to respond I know how to respond professionally, but I wanted to see it, reinforce it so that I could get in that mode, you know, don't take it personally crap. But a lot of them, I was seeing uh, sellers getting upset. Even one seller called uh, the buyer an idiot, <laughs> which I don't know if I could ever get away with that. But um, so it kind of made me feel better because obviously... Like, you can see on feedback where they were having a regular day. They were responding professionally to an idiotic return, you know. Um, and then you can see on the days when it caught them in a bad mood. And that's what I needed to see. We're all the same. We all have this. And I hope that you're having a better week than I am. I really do. So what I did was I turned my notifications off for YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Facebook Messenger. I kept my text messages on so my family can reach me. I called a friend and probably at least twice and talked her ear off about what's going on in my life and how I feel and it feels so good to, to unload. I feel bad about it, but if she ever needs to unload, I'm here. And then I just turn my notifications off and check them when I could because the phone going off was just, it was like nails on a chalkboard every time my phone went off. I was like, I can't deal with this. And just the littlest things, like there's this lizard on our door, on our front storm door, and he won't leave. And I'm, I'm afraid he's going to end up coming in the house and the dogs are going to kill him. I obsess about everything. And today it was the lizard. And I know Janie got tired of hearing about the lizard. I'm like, why doesn't he move on? You know, every time I open the door to pack my car, he, he was still there. 
just it's just the little things you know so I don't know all right so I didn't have enough drafts to let 30 go live for the next three or four days so I'm just and I'm I'm gonna let 15 every day go live and I, for the very first time ever I scheduled uh, things to go live I didn't know how to do it I had to watch uh, a video um, back from burnout Mel I watched her video on how to schedule listings because I couldn't figure it out and I got it so I've got listings scheduled for tomorrow 15 of them it wasn't hard I may start doing that um, I may start doing that when I'm drafting and then I don't have to get up in the morning and let things go live but I don't know well I never did think of the antidote so hopefully I'll be feeling better mentally on Saturday on Sunday and I'll have my shipping hangout shipping live stream and I don't know I don't even know when I'm gonna edit this video because I didn't even bring my computer with me I was like I'm not even bringing my computer I'm going to the bins gonna look for appliances and then I'm going to my honey hole there and look for appliances Okay, I'm going to insert this somewhere in the video. I just got out of the bins. I was there a total of 40 minutes start to finish. I got about eight or nine small parts for $5. Uh, it was by far one of the most violent trips to the bins I've ever been to. Uh, I, I think this is going to teach me my lesson not to go back to the bins. At least not this bins. Um, smelly. They still haven't gotten the bathroom situation fixed. It's still smelly in there. And they were cleaning after before I got in there. They were cleaning. Uh, people smelling. The clothes smelled in the bins. And the most thing was the violence. The throwing. I'm going to put on the screen right now the bun coffee maker that landed about this far from my head as it flew by. Um, a guy threw it across the bins to where I was. And... I looked up and I said, hey, and he, he just looked at me like, what the hell? And I could see other people throwing things and that were heavy, you know, and there's just, there's nobody there monitoring that. And what I worry about are children that are there getting hit. So I'm very disappointed. I'm not disappointed that I got something. At least I got more than 64 cents worth. Like the last time I came here, I didn't have a dollar in my pocket. I just brought a credit card. Had to go out to my car to get a buck because I only had 64 cents worth of appliance parts. And so I took my money in this time in case that happened. Bought five bucks. I put it on my credit card because I want it. I want to have a something in my checking account that says, you know, so I don't forget to record it in other words. All right. So I'm outside of Austin. And next stop, I'm going to go to my honey hole that not a lot of people know about. And if I have time, there is a thrift shop there that only takes cash. And I may see if they're still open. I doubt they will be. But anyway, it's kind of a bust. And I may not... I doubt I will go thrifting on Monday because I have so much inventory that I have not even processed yet. So, and somewhere between now and then, I gotta have some fun. I gotta take care of myself. I gotta go swimming. I gotta drink water. Um, eat, eat better. I don't know. Guys, please don't feel sorry for me. Please don't comment below. I'm so sorry, Beth. What I want to see is I feel the same way sometimes, Beth. That would be great. Hit me, hit the thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not. Like I said, this is not a normal video for me. But I had to get it off my chest. And again, Michelle, Reseller Project, if you're not subscribed to her, please do so. If you're watching, Michelle, thank you so much for being so honest and transparent with us. And you really, really inspired me to get this off my chest. I love you, girl. And all of y'all, don't forget to paddle on. We're all in this business boat together. Bye.